Okay, today is April the 20th, 2014, and we are going to be doing a combination services tonight um, on for Sermon Audio and YouTube. I don't know how it's going to work out, but we're going to try to figure it out and see how it works. Um, Today's been a beautiful day here in Weatherby, Missouri. It was beautiful sunshine today, and we had um, a beautiful time in the Lord this morning in our service. And we're looking forward to having a good uh, service tonight. It's really different when you worship in a house church um, than going to a mega church or going to a church with a cross and a phallic symbol in front of it. It's just totally different. Worshiping in a small little room in your house and being able to have what I call religious freedom, Christian liberty. <laughs> Not having our consciences bound by using some newfangled version like a new international version of the Bible or uh, the Revised Standard Version, or the American Standard Version, or the New King James Version, or the New Jerusalem Bible, or the Living Bible, or whatever. So we're glad to have you with us this evening. Um, do we have a selection? Okay, Rosette has picked page 34, Psalm 25a. Psalm 25a. Joy comes 
when dawns the morning light. In prosperous days I boast, and my mood I shall remain. O Lord, you by your favor my mouth to strength maintain. For when your face was hid, I soon was troubled sore. I'll cry to you, Jehovah, the Lord I will implore. Is there in my blood prophet, when I'm in the grave I dwell, will thus proclaim your praises, your truth and glory tell? Oh, hear me now, Jehovah, be gracious unto me. To you I cry, Jehovah, oh, now my helper be. You now have turned my sorrow to dancing full of joy. You loosened all my sackcloth and girded me with joy. To you sing songs my glory and never silent be. O Lord, my God, I'll thank you through all eternity. Well, we sing in the Psalter, and then we also sing out of this book called the Old School Hymnal. Hopefully you can see that. The Old School Hymnal, and that is the book that a lot of the old primitive Baptists use. And we're going to sing a song out of here, 414, Jesus, Thou Art the Sinner's Friend. And uh, We will... Uh, be probably including that song on, I think I already included that on one of the Phil Pot devotionals that we send out each morning. Jesus, thou art the sinner's friend, as such I look to thee. Now in the fullness of thy love, O Lord, remember me. Remember thy pure word of grace, remember Calvary, remember all thy dying groans, and then remember me. Thou wondrous advocate with God, I feel myself to thee, while thou art sitting on thy throne. O oh Lord, remember me. I own I'm guilty, own I'm vile, yet thy salvation's free. Then in thy all abounding grace, O oh Lord, remember me. How e'er forsaken or distressed, I bear a press thy feet. Now we are afflicted here on earth, O oh Lord, remember me. And when I close my eyes in death, creatures help softly. Then, O oh my great Redeemer God, I pray, remember me. Dear Lord, we pray that you will be with us tonight in the service. Pray that you would grant unto us your grace and your favor. Pray that your work, the word would be open to us and you would give us uh, nourishment that can only come from you. We ask this in Christ's name and for your glory. Amen. <clears throat> well, the. Uh, <clears throat> thing that happens when a person comes to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, Scripture tells us that all things become new. And uh, God has given a significant blessing to his people. We know that Jesus Christ has paid the cross for us on Calvary. We know that he was slain from the foundation of the world. 
scripture tells us in Ephesians that we were chosen in him before the foundation of the world. The scripture also tells us that he works all things after the counsel of his own will. And uh, we see this remarkably throughout scripture. I'm going to look at a passage in the 149th Psalm. If you want to turn to that, it starts out by saying, and, they, and here's what's happening here in the 149th Psalm is the prophet is exhorting to praise God for his love to the church. People talk about, you know, well, the church hasn't been around, you know, um, just a short time. I mean, you know, the New Testament church and so on. <laughs> Look, God has always had his people, including in the Old Testament. And I have one question to ask. Were the Old Testament saints in Christ's bride, or were they not? Of course they were. Of course they were. Praise ye the Lord. Sing in the Lord a new song, and his praise in the congregation of saints. <laughs> so it says. you got all these people out here saying you can't find Christ in the Old Testament. You can't find faith in the Old Testament. You know, there's no such thing as a church in the Old Testament. Dispensationalism teaches there's several ways to Christ, right? I start itching, scratching my head when I think about that. Here he says, Sing unto the Lord a new song and his praise in the congregation of saints. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. There's a lot of discussion in our society today about who is Israel. Who is Israel? <laughs> I'm not talking about the state of Israel. I've got a message on Sermon Audio if you want to go to it. I think it's, it's gotten thousands of hits. I mean, you know, I don't know why people are so interested in the subject, but it says if you are supporting the state of Israel, you're supporting false doctrine, Luciferian doctrine. Because the state of Israel doesn't believe in Christ. They don't uphold the Messiah. In fact, the state of Israel doesn't even want you to proclaim the gospel. So who's it talking about here? When it says, let Israel rejoice in him that made him, let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. It's talking about the bride of Christ. The same people that it's talking about in verse 1, referred to as the congregation of saints. Let them praise his name in the dance, let them praise unto him with the timbrel and the heart. For the Lord, notice also that in the second verse there, King is capitalized. And that's referring to our Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord taketh pleasure in his people. A lot of people out there that want to proclaim like Billy Graham that, you know, uh, God loves every man, woman, girl, and boy without exception. And it's just not the case. God has his elect people. We are a peculiar people, or a particular people, for whom Christ has died, or paid their sins, came to save his people from their sins. The Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. So what is the pleasure that God has taken and his people won as he's provided for them redemption through his son. And he gave his life for his people. It's not of works lest any man should boast. It's a free gift. Free gift. So a lot of people that are promoting free will need to read their Bible because the Bible says it's not of him that willeth nor of him that runneth, but God that showeth mercy. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. Here's the two-edged sword right here. The word of God. You know? 
And he says, to execute vengeance upon the heathen. Notice that. People talk about, you know, that Christ died for all people without exception. And here he talks about the executing vengeance upon the heathen. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with feathers of iron. To execute upon them the judgment written, this honor have all his saints. <laughs> I never will forget hearing Oprah Winfrey say that she just didn't like it. She was going to this Baptist church and she just didn't like the fact that uh, somebody there uh, made the statement that God was a jealous God. <laughs> she didn't like it. She said, that just didn't sound right. God was a jealous God. I couldn't go along with that. Just like a lot of people can't go along with a lot of things. You know. A lot of people can't go along with the ninth chapter of Romans either. You know, that just that just uh, irks me the wrong way, people say. The Bible has a way of, you know, causing those who are coming against God to become even more hostile against His Word. And it also has a way of comforting God's elect who realize that they are nothing out in and of themselves. The only hope for them is in God's grace, His sovereign grace. And of course, when we look at the certain passages in the, in the New Testament, we see the same uh, inference to this Israel of God. You know, there's a lot of these Messianic Jews going around. And whenever you start talking about the Israel of God, which represents both the Jew and the Gentile, they start saying, that's replacement theology. No, it's not replacement theology. It's the Bible. In fact, it was prophesied in the Old Testament that Christ would be a light unto the Gentiles. A light unto the Gentiles. And of course, I'm sure there's a lot of people that, like John Hagee, that totally deny these scriptures that we're referring to. They just cannot accept the fact that uh, because they are Zionists, they have taken so much money from Israel that they're in their pocket. <laughs> and we have to understand the state of Israel is, I'm sorry we had a little glitch there, and I don't know why it did that to me. Uh, let me see if I can get rid of this. I don't know why this keeps popping up on my screen when I keep asking it to close the window. And it won't uh, get rid of it right in the middle of a broadcast. So excuse me just one second. We'll try to get it straightened out. Uh, God does, or Satan doesn't like it when you're proclaiming the truth. What can I say? Anyway, we'll just keep on going with our message. And hopefully we can get this back. Um, here real soon but uh, the thing that is amazing to me is that uh, when people start talking about the Israel of God now we're back they want to try to say that it's some people over there in Israel of a certain genetic seed. And we know that there is a remnant according to the election of God. I'm looking in the 11th chapter of Romans. He says, God hath not cast away his people which he foreknew. What saith the answer of God? And am I reserved to myself 7,000 men that have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal? Even so, at this time, at this present time also, there's a remnant according to the election of grace. And notice here, he's talking about grace. 
the unmerited favor of God. And so, we don't boast because the branches are being cut off because God can graft them back in again. And He's going to graft in those who are, who are called according to His purpose. He says um, here that uh, verse 29 the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. Oh, the depths of Verse 33, of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out, who hath known the mind of the Lord or been his counselor. For of him and through him and to him are all things, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, so we have to realize that this Old Testament the Old Testament saints are part of the church. We read in that passage in Psalms earlier. And he talks about singing a new song. That's what regeneration does. He told Nicodemus, he said, you must be born again by the Spirit of God. You must be born again. There's no such thing as... Uh, one executing their free will and <laughs> being, you know, causing themselves to be born again. It says in Romans 9, uh, 16, It is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. And so, uh, we want to proclaim that he is not a Jew who is one outwardly, but inwardly circumcision of the heart. The only Jew, either in the Old Testament or New Testament, the only Gentile, either in the Old Testament or the New Testament, that is going to be ushered into the realms of glory are going to be those who have been born again by the Spirit of God. In the fifth chapter of Romans, verse uh, 9, it says, in, starting with verse 8, God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Excuse me, much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more being reconciled we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also join in God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom we have now received the atonement. Well, <laughs> a lot of confusion about, you know, who is a Jew and what is a Jew and Who's God's chosen people? And I pretty well described it here tonight. If you want me to further prove that, let's go to the second chapter of Romans. And uh, let's read uh, 28 um, and 29. For he is not a Jew which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart. And the spirit, not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. So the night, let's remember that Christ is the one that did all the work. And we give all glory and honor to him. And we glory in the fact that he is no respecter of persons. And that he... Uh, brought salvation to both Jew and Gentile. Do we have a selection? Okay, page 51, Psalm 99c has been selected. Page 51, Psalm 99c. The Lord is King indeed, let peoples quail and fear. 
He sings above the cherub and let earth be moved. The Lord in Zion rules and over all is high. Oh, praise His great and dreadful name, the Holy One. The power of the King delights in equity. In Jacob you establish law and righteousness. Exalt and celebrate the Lord who is our God. And at his footstool worship him the Holy One. For Moses was his priest and Aaron to discern. And Samuel, all of them who call upon his name, the Lord received their cry. He spoke from out the clouds. His testimonies they obeyed, they kept his laws. O Lord our God, you heard, and answer gave to them. You were a God that bore them, but judged their words. Exalt the Lord our God, by to his holy hill. Be holy is the Holy One, the Lord our God. We thank you for your word. We're thankful that your salvation has been around and that your covenant was an eternal covenant the foundation of the world, before the foundation of the world, before this earth was created. And we're thankful that you are not controlled by man's will and his evil devices, but you have given us sovereign grace through your Son, Jesus Christ. We ask this in your name. Your Lord, uh, be with us today. Let us have a Pray anything you pray, but 